Welcome everybody to Painting with Victoria. I'm so glad you could join me today. Today I'll be teaching you something new, something that I've just discovered, and it'll be a textured watercolor painting. We will be using 140 pound watercolor paper, and I'm introducing Hippie Crafters watercolor paint set today. They have 36 beautiful, vivid colors, and I really enjoyed using them in this project. And I think you will too when you get your own set. So also I'll be using Golden's Molding Paste. And this is very new for me, using um, this texture. So with that said, let's get started. I have my paper taped down and I've got my molding paste. Funny thing is, is I found this at a uh, thrift store for like a dollar. And I know it's definitely more than a dollar. Um, and here is my finished piece. As you can see, it's very textured. When you tip it over, you see the shadows. So I will be taking you from start to finish on this project. So when I begin, I'd work with a dry brush. I don't dip it in water first. I want it to be dry because I'm going to be um, kind of smushing around the paste. I put a glob down to represent where I want my first rows to go and I'll put a second glob down and then a third one. So this is kind of my, um, I guess my basic layout that I want to use. So I take the brush and sort of go in swirling motions. Um, I won't know if I'm happy with it until it just looks like a rose to me. So as you can see, I'm just sort of going around and around. It's kind of taking shape. Um, as I move on to the second one, doing the same thing. I kind of want this one to be a little bit bigger than the other rows. If you need to apply more molding paste, by all means do, because I put a good amount on, but maybe you'll be timid when you first put it down. So you want, um, a very generous amount when you first put it down. And um, see, as, as it grows, I realize, you know what, maybe I wanna change this rose a little bit and um, just keep working with it. My paintbrush is getting very gloppy, but um, I think that's what it takes to get the motion of the petals. Okay, so we're working on the third one now I'm just going, just swishing it from left to right in a circular motion. And like I said, I'll know it when it's done. It, again, as you can see, I'm not looking for a perfectly shaped rose with petals. I'm actually just looking for uh, just sort of the um, representation of a rose. So uh, yeah, I kind of like this right now. Let's see. And to do the leaves, I am trying to just keep that simple. Just one smushy stroke there. And really this, I'm just making this up as I go along. So, um, just trying to figure where I want my leaves or how many leaves I want. So when you go to try this, you're going to um, just sort of design it yourself, design the pattern the way you want it to look. Hmm, I like that. One up here on the top. And again, this is, um, I'm just making this up as I go along. Yeah, I like that. So I think at this point we'll let it dry. Some of these are some of my finished pieces and I just thought I would show them to you. The large rows is what we'll be working on today. So I'll start with um, blocking in water, just plain water all over my um, watercolor paper. Oh, I forgot to say that what I did is I did take gesso and put 
gesso over the entire thing. You can paint gesso on watercolor paper and still paint with watercolors and it works just fine. But my molding paste, I don't know if watercolors would hold to it, so I went ahead and put gesso over the rows and when I got out of lines, I just decided, oh, I'll just do the whole thing. So um, please don't forget to put gesso. So as you can see, I've already started blocking in this lemon yellow color. And see how beautiful these colors are immediately. I barely dipped into it and they're just so beautiful. And I'm just gonna give it one coat. The water's wet, everything's wet right now. Make sure it's all over. And now I'm going to dip into um, just a warm, um, kind of a mustard color. And I'll just start to just give it a little bit more depth, go around the edges. This is just uh, one layer. We're gonna do several layers in this painting because watercolors usually dry uh, lighter. So I wanna make sure I put on this paint um, in sort of a medium value. See where it is and see how much more um, colors I want to apply. So this is nice, I'm really liking this. And the two colors will just fade into each other because again, my watercolor paper is wet. So I let that dry because um, it's not completely dry, but it's, it's mostly dry. And now I'm dipping into this beautiful rose color. And what I'm going to do is block in my rose. And you really have to punch it in there because my rose is very textured. let it kind of soak into it. Now you can get out of the lines a little bit. I kind of like that and it will somewhat bleed into the yellow. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see after it dries. It always does magical things while it's drying. And you can let this dry, but you don't have to. You can go right into the next color if you want to. It's up to you. Um, I did put mine out in the sun for about five minutes. And now I'm going to apply this beautiful sap green color. And like I said, this is just the first layer. It's, it probably doesn't look exciting to you right now, but it's going to be uh, when I get done. I've gotten out the lines a little bit. That's good. I kind of want it to fade into the yellow color. So everything is dry right now. I did put it, I always go out and put it in the sun. The sun dries it in five minutes. Seriously, it dries so fast. So now I'm putting on my second layer of the rose. This time I mixed a tiny bit of red in my beautiful fuchsia pink color. And I'm just dabbing it inside the creases. Not really, um, touching the area that lifts out. Um, I wanna keep that a lighter tone. So as you can see, I'm punching it into the crevices of my rose. And what that's going to do is give it a lot of depth. So um, again, I just, just sort of um, playing. Um, this is uh, not supposed to be you know, so perfect looking. I like the fact that it's a little on the abstract and modern look. So have fun with this and play around with it. Um, as you could see by some of my other pictures, I did do a tree, a forest tree, a sunflower. Um, to me, the roses would be the simplest way to start, but you could do a tree. Oh gosh, you could do anything, but just keep it pretty simple if you're not used to working with the modeling paste yet. And you can also use a spackling knife if you want to. Um, I just chose to use the brush 
just so it would be um, a little on the rougher side. So as you can see, my rose is definitely getting more vibrant. And I'm mixing the two colors again, the red and the pink. And I'm gonna go back over some of my crevices and really deepen them up. And this is gonna give it that rich, rich rose color. Just tapping it in gently. I uh, switched over to a smaller brush to do this part as well. It's really fun how the texture um, really makes those petals pop out. I actually saw somebody doing something like this on a wall and I just thought, hey, why can't we do that on uh, watercolor paper or canvas? And you could, you could do this all um, with a canvas, but yet instead of using um, watercolors, you would use acrylic paint. Okay, so now what I'd like to do before um, I get into my leaves is I really wanna deepen the background some more because the leaves are really the last thing I want to paint. So I've went back to that beautiful mustard color and I've mixed it with a tiny bit of the um, terracotta color next to it. Just a little, just using a little of that. And I'm going to um, go around my entire rose again. I did let the rose uh, dry out in the sun. So every level just um, just take it out and let it dry for a few minutes. Unless it's a rainy day, then you'll want to use a blow dryer. And just hold it there for about five minutes. That seems to be the magic time for me. And the um, molding paste actually stops my brush. So it's easier to outline this because uh, the molding paste is the outline. Just keep dabbing it on. Everything seems to be working in my favor so far. Like I said, I just decided to try something new. And um, I most of the time, when I've seen people use do something like this, they use acrylic paint. But I tend to really love working with watercolors. And a friend of mine at an art retreat said that if you gesso a canvas, you can watercolor on top of that. So that's why I decided, well, I'll gesso on top of the molding paste and this watercolor paper, and there you go. So I'm almost done. Let's see, I'm gonna go with more of this um, terracotta color and hit the edges and the crevices. Just give it a little bit more um, motion. Try not to put a whole lot of thought into this. Just relax and enjoy it. It's, um, it's only paint. And the good news is, is if something seems like it's lacking something, you can always paint on top of it. But you see now my rose is definitely looking a, more alive with that beautiful, uh, rich, golden background. All right, I let that dry again and because I didn't want my leaves to bleed into my yellow background. And so I've taken my, one of my round brushes and now I'm just kind of just deciding where I want to just hand paint some extra leaves, keeping in mind that I definitely still have to punch this color into the molding paste that um, represents the leaves. So I'll just let you watch for a while because I think some of the best ways to learn how to paint is just watching somebody. I 
love how it it um, goes into the crevices and it gets a lot darker too. You can see where some of the green paint bled um, around my stem, but I actually like that. Um, that is a, um, no mistake. I always hope for a little bit of bleeding just because it makes it look more like a painting. So I am just, by the way, I'm using, as you can see, I'm using about three greens. Experiment, and, and I always test on a little scrap piece of watercolor paper just so I know what I'm getting myself into but um, I never like to use some of uh, my watercolors just straight sometimes I do but most of the time I like to mix a couple colors together just so it makes it a little bit more um, original and look how wonderful this stem came out with the the actual molding paste sticking up it's really given the stem a lot of depth I'm adding a few thorns because most of the time we have thorns on our roses and um, adding some extra tiny leaves. These uh, round brushes are great for getting that point at the very end. So as you can see, I'm dabbing some um, more green paint just as shadows. Just really have to play with it. Create your own motion. Oh, I'm just absolutely loving this molding paste technique. It's so fun. And this is, as you can see, this looks like it's about, oh, probably like a five by seven um, piece of paper, which is um, a card size or a standard frame size. So it, whether you want to send it as a card or frame it and hang it up, it's just a sweet, sweet painting to have or to give away as a lovely gift. Feeling like this is good. Just a few more details. Alright, so I did splatter some green paint on it and I put a gold border. This is what it looks like when it's framed. Here is a small bookmark that I started. And here it is finished. Isn't that nice? Here's my sunflower. This is what it looks like if it were hanging on a wall. And the last one I did was my winter forest tree. And this is what it looks like on a wall. And that's of course on a larger scale. Well, thank you for watching. I so enjoyed this technique and I hope you'll try it at least once. And um, I wanna thank Hippie Crafters for sending me these lovely watercolor paints. They worked fantastic for this project and I hope that you will um, pass on this video to your friends and to your family and make sure you subscribe to my channel because I have lots of fun classes and I will continue to make them.